Hi guys, my name is Barton and welcome to your ninth tutorial on ISO 8583. Okay, in this particular tutorial, we'll be looking at a fixed compound field. So before we go ahead and create this particular class, go back to your compound field interface and add the following four methods. So I've created two convenience methods here. Set value, which takes in the field ID and the value. So uh, if I'm setting the MTI of a message then i'll pass in zero and the mti here and i also have one convenience method for getting the value okay then i also have these two convenience methods here which i will use for nested compound fields okay so go ahead and add those all right and then we can go ahead and continue with the fixed compound field so go ahead and create a class called fixed compound field that implements the compound field interface okay so let me explain some of this field so this is a very important class uh, and uh, just as a side note guys this particular class will use it only once and we will use this to represent the entire message okay we'll use this class to represent the entire message okay actually we could also use a variable compound field but since we haven't discussed that well we'll do that in the next particular video in the next tutorial so just to show you uh, if you go to our configuration file you can see that the first iso field or the outermost iso field is a fixed compound field okay this iso field is a fixed compound field all right so that's really handy to know because now this represents the whole message because remember we want to use interfaces to uh, to abstract access to these particular fields okay so most of the fields here are similar to what we have in other fields so the ones i have, I have highlighted we've already looked at that many times okay so this iso field is a config file i'm just storing this here because i need it later the secondary bitmap is a boolean field which is used to denote whether there is a secondary bitmap or there isn't okay so if it's one or if it's true then it will mean that a secondary bitmap is present okay so this is where i'll be storing my bitmaps before i actually do any encoding so this is going to be 129 long okay so i'm using 129 long because i want to start counting from zero as opposed to counting from one from one. sorry i want to start counting from one as opposed to counting from zero okay i want when i say i'm setting field on 28 then i'm setting field on 28 i don't want to have to offset by one you know just to to minimize confusion also i'm adding one because the 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 first field which is field zero i'm using it as an mti and as you know that is not present here in the bitmap the mti is not is not indicated is in the bitmap okay so the mti is always there right so you don't need a bitmap for that okay then i have a map here where i'm storing all the fields all right so if you go to the constructor most of this is the same as we've had in the other classes so this is just storing the configuration file locally and this here is where i'm actually getting the list of fields from the message okay so this particular list that starts from zero going all the way to the last field that list is the one that i am storing here okay then i have a loop here that goes ahead and instantiates each of those fields and stores them in this particular map alongside the id all right so field id zero which is my mti is going to be stored here so i'll go all the way up to 128 all right so the bitmap is also going to be stored here all those fields are, are going to be created and i'm going to buffer them here every time we create an, an instance of a message so if you look at this create me field method uh, this is a method that uses it's a method that is using uh, reflection 
so this is a config file for that particular field so if it's the MTI then this is a config file for the MTI right so you get the class you know you load that particular class get the constructor and then create an instance of that field so as you can see the config file is what is passed there all right so that creates for us our our field and sets it here so once we do that then our fixed compound field has been bootstrapped right so after creating an instance of a compound field what you need to do is to start setting is to start setting fields yeah you want to set field zero you want to set your mti you want to set your field 60 you want to set your amount you want to set your account number yeah so how do you do that now you can use this method called set value right this is the best method for using so as you can see uh, when I want to set a value, I have to to set uh, to send in the ID of the value and the actual value itself. So because this is a message, if I want to set the MTI, then I would pass in zero here and the value, right? So if I want to set zero eight hundred, I just call this method and pass in zero and zero eight hundred as the value here. Okay. Uh, so before I actually said, I have to make sure that the field ID is more than one. Because as we said, the MTI, which is field ID zero, is not included in the bitmap. Now remember the bitmap helps, helps us know which fields are present and which ones are, are not. So every time we set a value, then we want to flip the corresponding bit. Okay, We want to flip the corresponding bit in the bitmap. So if that field ID is more than one, then we go ahead and flip that bit field, all right? That field in the bitmap, we go ahead and set one to it, which means now we are saying that that field is present. So that's what that does. So here, we are taking care of the secondary bitmap. Now, I'm not sure if I told you this guys before, uh, the first bit in the bitmap is special okay so remember our field one is the bitmap all right now the first bit in the bitmap is used to denote the presence of the secondary bitmap so if the first bit is one then that means that there is a secondary bitmap present okay if it's zero then it means the secondary bitmap is absent okay so how do we know if we have a secondary bitmap all right or how do we know that our fields are more than 64 so when you call set value and you're setting a value whose id is more than 64 and at the same time you have not yet set the secondary bitmap then go ahead and run this code so what does this code do it says hey you know what the secondary bitmap is present so make that true right and then set the first bit in the bitmap all right so if this is one the first bit then what does it mean the secondary bitmap is present now i know most of you are thinking that here you'll always <laughs> you'll, you'll have a one where you're setting our now remember here we are checking to make sure that the value is more than one so there is no way you can come set the value of field one because field one is the bitmap field one is going to be amended every time you set the value of another field okay i hope that's clear guys so this is the method is used to get the value so here you just pass in the field id so this uses a helper method where i actually get the field first and then call get value right so let's look at this get field method what does it do remember i've already buffered my fields so this particular map has all my fields so i just get this particular field right once i get this particular field then i call get value right if I call get value, then I get whatever value that field has, right? Simple enough. Uh, I also have a method here for setting the values of nested fields. So if this is an ISO message, 
and we have another compound field let's say field 127 it's normally a compound field so if I want to use the compound field to set the value of field 127 all right so what would I do in this particular case yeah remember field 127 is a compound field right so I can't set field 127 as a whole I need to set some of the fields in field 127 so here I would set value and then pass in 127 here right but field 127 is a compound field so it has field 0 as well it has field 1 as well it has field 3 and all those other fields so that is what I would use here okay so that's why you see that the value I'm first setting it as an empty string you know just to empty out whatever was there and then I create a compound field because guess what here we are using a compound field that's why we have a major and a minor field ID so we get the ID we get the field so I showed you this method so this is going to retrieve our field from the map okay it's going to retrieve our field from here so once we get that particular field then we just call get field right uh, sorry that is not where we are uh, this is where we were guys so after getting that particular field then I can call set value now just a regular set value okay because now whatever I'm interacting with is the compound field all right not the compound field inside the compound field get it so I can also do the reverse to get the value so just get the field and then call get value and pass in the self field ID right so I can also set the field right so here I was setting the value but here I can actually set the field okay simple enough right so here I can also set the field right here I can set the field so if I have the ISO message uh, sorry if I have one of the fields of the ISO message say I have field uh, 0 and I want to set it I can just pass in 0 here and the actual field as opposed to the value right uh, okay okay set field and get field it's an override uh, just a minute guys just a minute sorry guys uh, I was just a bit uh, I was just a bit uh, confused about this particular method so yeah we can actually set the field all right if you have the field so this is going to alter the fields that we actually have in our map okay uh, we can also get the field here if we have the field ID and the sub field ID right we can also get the field from the buffer right so this is for the nested fields and this is for this particular field as well okay so guys uh, go ahead and check those methods out so in the next video we're going to look at the encode method all right we're going to look at the encode and the decode method okay that is where the meat of the tutorial actually is okay so that's it for this video guys so thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe